to one, verse three to verse nine. Okay. We proclaim to you what you have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make your joy our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I read from New Living Translation. We are telling you about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that your joy will be complete. This is the message he has given us to announce to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if you say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not living in the truth, but if we are living in the light of God's presence, just as Christ is, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. In our hearts. Now we started meditating on this uh, first letter of Apostle John. And John begins from the very beginning like his gospel. That what was in the beginning, what was existing from the beginning with the Father, and the Son was manifested in the flesh. So John is saying that the Lord Jesus was existing with the Father right from the beginning, not when he came into this world, but he was manifested in flesh and blood so that they could see him, they could touch him, and they could hear him, they could feel him. And so they experienced the presence of the Son of God face to face, and they had been with him. And that is what John was saying, that we tell you what we have experienced personally, and so that you also may experience the same. And then come together for fellowship, oh, with, fellowship the with the Father and the Son. Father. And so our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, and together with those who experience the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is the wonderful thing, the gospel that, uh, the personal testimony that Apostle John is sharing first. Therefore, we have seen the importance of sharing our experience with the Lord Jesus before we share what God told us to announce. I mean, the good news of the gospel. And that's why the first four, four verses, uh, Apostle John talks about his own experience that brought him into right relationship with God and also fellowship with God and his people. And so he says in verse 4, that verse 3, 
that we are telling you about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard. So it's the first-hand eyewitness account. It's not some story, some mythology, right? Some rumor, but it's a first-hand eyewitness account, and therefore it's trustworthy. And so when we are sharing God's word, we must emphasize on this to the non-Christians. The people who do not know the word of God, how can they believe that this is truth? That we must tell them that this is account of an eyewitness. This is not a mythology. Some story that nobody knows whether it happened or not. But we are sure this is credible uh, eyewitness account of the one who had been with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's trustworthy that we can believe it without any doubt. So that's why he repeats again and again that we are telling you what we have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. So the purpose of sharing this testimony is that the hearers will have fellowship with apostles. And so when we are sharing the gospel, the purpose is that the people may have fellowship with us. That means they come into God's kingdom. They experience the same that we have experienced. And here, what Apostle John experienced, the presence of the Lord, and he is calling people to experience the same so that we can have fellowship. So fellowship begins with personal experience with God. If people do not have personal experience with the Lord, they cannot have fellowship with one another. It is not just coming together because you belong to the same community, same language, same caste, as in India, we have churches based on caste and community, language, culture, and so on. But it is not that. But many of them have no personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. They just belong to the same community, and they come together like a social gathering, a social club. But that is not true fellowship. Fellowship begins with the personal experience of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, Apostle Paul said to Corinthians that you cannot have fellowship with unbelievers. That means he is not saying you cannot have fellowship with those who do not belong to your own community or caste. He is saying you cannot have fellowship with unbelievers. That means those who have not come to faith in Christ, who have not believed in the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who have not experienced the Lord Jesus personally. You cannot have fellowship with them. And this is what Apostle John is calling people to have fellowship with him. And he says, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And this is the foundation for our fellowship together. The fellowship begins with the Father and his Son. And then we have fellowship together as believers in Christ. So our fellowship must be with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father every day. Every day we may not meet with one another, but our fellowship first should be with the Father and the Son every day in our lives, and then when we meet with other believers. Now this is very important. So he's emphasizing the primary uh, fellowship with the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have fellowship with one another. And now he says why he is writing he says that I, we write these things so that your joy may be full and complete. And now when we think about fellowship, when we think about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, there is great joy in that. Now, Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians, we have seen about the joy always in every situation in our lives. And John is bringing us to the joy of fellowship with God. And so there must be joy in our fellowship. When we come together as God's people, there should be overflow, overflowing joy because of the Lord's presence with us. You see, and that's what exactly the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 11, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be complete or your joy may be full. No, when we have the joy of the Lord, our joy will be full. And that is what happens in the fellowship. So when we come together for fellowship with God's people, there is joy. That we come together to share the joy of the Lord. As we sing together, 
as we minister to one another, as we encourage one another, we share in the joy of the Lord. And that's why as we meditate on the word of God, there is joy. And so uh, the, the very purpose of having fellowship is to experience the joy of the Lord. And that's what he says that we are writing these things so that you, your joy may be full. So when we read the word of God, there is joy. Yesterday I was telling a man who had come from the bank to discuss about some things. And uh, while he was leaving, I gave him a New Testament in his own language, that's Hindi. And I told him, whenever you have pressure on mind, you have some kind of uh, tension problems, you open and read it. You will have joy. You will have peace of God. You see, so God's word will restore peace and joy to our lives when we come together. Hear the word of God. Read the word of God. And this should be our attitude. That why we read the word of God. John is telling that we are writing these things to you that your joy may be full. And our joy is not full in the world. You cannot find your joy in the world because you are not of this world. The Lord said to the Father when he was praying in John chapter 17, Father, I am not this of this world. And therefore they are not of this world. And so there will be no joy for you in the world. The, the Lord said there will be tribulation in the world. Rejoice because I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. In the Lord we have joy. In the Lord we have peace. But in the world we have tribulation. We have disturbance. We have pressure. We have opposition. We have persecution in the world. But in the Lord we have peace and joy. And therefore we need to come together. In the first century the early church met every day. Daily they, they met together. And they broke bread with gladness in their heart. We read. They were filled with joy. And they had fellowship with the Lord and with one another. And that is missing today. You know, in some places when people come together, there is not even a smile on their face. They are not filled with joy. They have bitter feelings against one another. They have fightings. All right. And they have desires. And they want positions and so many things. And they come together, there is no joy. And they go away, there is no joy. But true fellowship must fill our hearts with joy. And that's what John is saying in verse 4. Now from verse 5, he brings our focus to what God has revealed to them. The good news. The good news is not given by man. The good news is coming from God. He says that verse 5, this is the message he has given to us to announce to you. And now God has given the message to the apostles. The message is not from any man. This is very important for us. See, the, uh, the source of the gospel is God himself. The source of the goodness is God himself. See, God himself sent the goodness to the apostles. So they heard from the Lord himself. Uh, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. Now he is coming to the very nature of God, the personality of God. And this is how the gospel begins with God. Gospel ends with God. Gospel begins with God, who God is. God who is righteous, God is holy. And therefore man is a sinner. Man cannot stand before the holy God. Now, when we don't talk about the nature of God, and you have no gospel at all. See, why we need gospel? Because we are sinners. Why we are sinners? Because God is so holy. God is so righteous. We are not able to meet his standard. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We have fallen short of his high standard for man. And therefore, man is a sinner. And this is how we share the gospel. So gospel begins with God's nature, God's attributes, God's personality. And this is very important. We don't suddenly start saying you must repent, you are a sinner. You know, we start talking about who God is. How holy he is, how righteous he is, how loving he is, how kind he is, how compassionate he is. He does not want anyone to perish. And so this is how we begin the gospel. And so John is telling that God is light. What does it mean? God is light means light speaks of 
clarity purity and light speaks of truth right light speaks of morality all right for our practical application so light speaks of truth and also light speaks of purity holiness and so he said that there is no darkness at all darkness speaks of sin and wrong doing sin and wickedness right and so the person john says that god is so holy god is so pure god is truth and there is nothing like a lie uh, uh, untruth in him and there is no sin in him and so god's nature we must know we must be sure of god's attributes now when you look at that idol you do not learn anything about it you do not learn any attributes about god i have been telling this to people often see when you look at an idol you don't understand anything about god you see you don't understand any any attributes about god and this is why when we read the word of god we are learning who god is really what are his attributes what kind of personality he has you see and so john begins with the very nature of god saying god is light in the sense god is holy god is true god is pure so there is nothing impurity or uh, nothing of sin in god and this is what john is saying so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with god but go on living in spiritual darkness now he is applying god's nature to those who belong to god now when god's people are not living in light are not living in truth are not, not living holy lives they are not having fellowship with god so our practical life proves our relationship with god our practical life shows with whom we have fellowship whether we are walking in the light or in darkness so practical life is very important sometimes people talk of theology so much intellectual knowledge but that doesn't show your fellowship or relationship with god you can anybody can have had knowledge by reading book or by reading the bible but practicing the principles is not easy because that comes only from the power of god living in you you see only the holy spirit can empower you to obey god's word to practice every day because in this world of sin full of sin the world is full of power of sin and satan satan is ruling and to be away and live separated lives sanctified lives is not in anybody's capability it only comes from god's power that's why the holy spirit is given to us to empower us to live the holy life to have the purity in our lives when we are living in the midst of impure people impure uh words in pure world right how can we maintain our purity you see and this happens only when we are having fellowship with god and so he says that when you say you have fellowship with god but your lives are showing that you are living in spiritual darkness that you are not really having god's holiness or purity in your life you are not really living in truth and that means you are not having fellowship with god and our fellowship with god you know enables us to live in truthfulness and holiness those who are in fellowship with god they cannot live in sin they cannot live in lies and falsehood they cannot live in darkness this is what he says when we are having fellowship with god we are in the light because god is in the light mm-hmm. right we are not living in the Sure. So when when you are when you are not living in the truth, that means you do not have fellowship with God. See, when you are living in spiritual darkness, you are not having fellowship with God, and that's what they, John says here, verse seven. But if we are living in the light of God's presence, if we are living in the light of God's presence, that means the truth. of god if we are living in the truth of god 
that means we are living in the light of god's presence just as christ is the lord jesus christ is in the very presence of god in the glory heaven uh, so when we are obeying god's word when we are doing the truth of god's word we are in the very presence of god we are in the kingdom of god we are in the world but not of this world so we are separated our lives are separated because we are living in the truth the world world lives in darkness you see that's the difference though we are in this world but we are walking with god in light because we are living in the truth of god when we are practicing the truth of god's word we are separated from this world we are walking in the light and this is what john is talking here then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from every sin and now when we are walking in the light we have fellowship with god that means we are living in the truth then we can have fellowship with one another and this is very important so each believer's condition before god is essential we have fellowship with one another why people are not able to have fellowship because they are not living in the light they are not having real fellowship with god and that is the reason that people are not able to have fellowship with one another they may be coming together but they are fighting they have bitterness towards one another enmity towards one another they cannot live in harmony and peace because their lives are not lived in truthfulness and holiness of god they are not really having fellowship with god as we have seen earlier again there only that our fellowship is with the father and his son in verse three and so when we do not have real fellowship with the father and his son we cannot have fellowship with one another so to have fellowship with the father and his son we must be walking in the light that is we must be living life of truthfulness when we are living in the truth of god's word then we will be able to have fellowship with one another and that's why in corinthians paul exhorted the believers when you come to the lord's table examine yourselves before you partake of the lord's table before you say that as the bread is one we are one as we drink from the one cup that we belong to one lord one body we belong to one another as the body of christ before you do that you examine your life whether you are worthy to partake whether you have the attitude of truthfulness whether you are walking in the light whether you are having fellowship with god you examine your life paul exhorts believers in first corinthians chapter 10 and 11 though in the in those two chapters paul writes about the fellowship at the lord's table so when we come together to have fellowship at the lord's table we are having fellowship with the lord and with one another so that is the place of self examination to see whether we are walking in truthfulness whether we are walking in the light whether we have true fellowship with the father and his son the lord jesus christ then we will be able to have fellowship with one another if we do not have fellowship with god and his son lord jesus christ we cannot have fellowship with one another and that's why many people find it very difficult to have fellowship with one another because their fellowship with god is not right they are not walking in the light and this is what john is saying and then what happens when we are walking in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus his son cleanses us from every sin now he is coming to the sin and the cleansing now he talked about fellowship he talked about light and then now he is coming to the truth and cleansing from the truth now when we have fellowship with one another when we are walking in the light our sins are exposed to us and we become sensitive to our life and we begin to see how our life is really in the light of god's word because we are walking in the light our life is very clearly visible to us we will be able to see how our life is and also in the fellowship of god's people we begin to see how our life is how our walk with god is 
And then we begin to confess our sins to God. Then we receive cleansing in the blood of Jesus Christ. He says that when we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. So there is cleansing in the fellowship. When we have fellowship in the light, our lives are open to us. Then we begin to agree with God about our sin. And we seek cleansing by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless we come to see how our life is, we do not seek for the cleansing. And so when we see how defiled we are, how sinful we are, then we seek for the cleansing by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This happens when we are walking in the light, when we are willing to obey the word of God, when we have right fellowship with God, then, then our sins are exposed to us. You see, people living in the darkness in the world, they cannot see their sin. This is what is happening. How much you tell them, they don't understand. They cannot see their sin. They only see the need for money. They see the need for a job. They see the need for healing. They see the need for a miracle. And they see the need for prosperity and so on. So many tem temporary, transitory and the worldly needs they see, but they're not the need for cleansing because they don't see the need, you know, the sin in their lives. So they don't see the need for cleansing, but they see the need for all other worldly things. This is how people... are in bondage to self. How, how God's word, right, we become aware of our sins and we seek cleansing from our sins in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we say we have no sin, which is, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. Now, what is the meaning of confessing? Confessing means that you agree with God with what he is saying. If he says you are all sinners, you say, yes, Lord, I am a sinner. That is confession. So the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that we are separated from God because of our own sin. That nobody is holy. Nobody is righteous in the eyes of God. All have gone astray. All have left God's way. All have rebelled against God. All have become sinners. Nobody's heart is good in the eyes of God. When we say, yes, Lord, it is true, we are confessing. So confessing is accepting what God says in his word. Agreeing with God and this truth. So when people say, oh, there is no sin in me, I am okay. That means they are fooling themselves. And they are not accepting the truth of God's word. That's why God's word is opening our hearts to see our real condition so that we may confess and we may agree with God to receive forgiveness for sins. And so when we don't agree with God, we are fooling ourselves and we are refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. Say that when we confess our sins, when we agree with God, He is righteous and faithful. The Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are people who go and confess to the priest. You know, Roman Catholics go and confess to the priest, thinking that the priest will forgive. A priest will pray for their forgiveness. Bible doesn't say that. We are committing sin against God, and we must ask him to forgive us. And this is what John is talking about. This is not wrongdoing against another. When we do something wrong against another, we must go to that person and ask for forgiveness. We must confess to that person what wrong we have done. But here he is talking about the sin that we commit against God. And we must confess to God. And he says that because he is righteous, uh, he will be able to forgive us. And he will cleanse us from every wrong, that he will cleanse us from every sin. And this is what we see here. So how, how God is going to forgive us because he is faithful and he is loving. He does not want anyone to perish, 
and he is willing to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness we will continue because the phone battery is down now so today we have seen how god is light and we must have fellowship with him in the light that our lives must be lived in truthfulness and we must come to god and confess our sins and we must agree with god with his truth and then we receive cleansing for our lives in the blood of the lord jesus christ then we will be able to have fellowship with one another may god bless his word so let us pray father we thank you for this day again you have given to us thank you for speaking to us your word is truth and you are light and may we walk in the light and receive cleansing for our lives that we may live in the truth of your word in obedience to your word to what you are teaching us lord that we may also have fellowship with one another when we have fellowship with you then we will be able to have fellowship with one another lord we thank you and praise you that truly meet again may your love one gaze in the joy and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us in the most precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen